Welcome learners. Our first lesson towards coding is problem solving and algorithm. Now the four basic steps to problem solving is to first is just read and understand the problem. So given a problem, you must read and understand the problem. And we have to do this before we can code a problem into a programming language. Next is IPO. We identify the inputs, the processes, and the outputs. Now, what is your input? It is what you must give the computer to work with. That's what your input is, what the input, what the computer requires for you to enter. Your process refers to what the computer must do with the current data. Output refers to what result or answer is to be displayed, printed after processing. Specs. We do a specific example. Now the specific example will help you do the next step, which is your algorithm. You need to design an algorithm and this can be based on your specific example. You develop an algorithm. An algorithm refers to step-by-step -step instructions to solve a problem. It is important to both computers and programmers. So we need to design an algorithm before we can continue with coding. Examples of algorithms, one is your pseudocode, which is an ordered list of steps used to carry out a task or solve a problem. So it's an ordered list of steps that we need to carry out the task. The flowchart is a diagram consisting of shapes and arrows used to solve a problem. We will first work with pseudocode and then move on to flowchart later on in the lessons to follow. Finally, you work with a trace table. That's a tool used to test your algorithm. You've got to test your algorithm to ensure that there are no logical errors. Logical errors means errors in the meaning or understanding of the algorithm. So error in the meaning of the algorithm. So if your algorithm was to add two numbers, it should not be multiplying two numbers and that will be a logical error. So your trace table will help us or help you test your algorithm. Now algorithms are used in our daily lives. Let us look at an algorithm to solve the problem of making hot chocolate. So in our daily lives, we are always solving algorithms most people have a specific way they prefer to drink their hot chocolate. The algorithm below describes one way to make hot chocolate. So this is just one plan, or one list. This is a numbered list of instructions to solve a problem. So this is actually a pseudocode. One is you fetch a cup from the cupboard, you place the cup on the counter, you add water to the kettle, maybe until there's 500 ml of water, you turn on the kettle, add four teaspoons of hot chocolate to the cup, add 30 ml milk, add one teaspoon sugar, stir for 10 seconds, add boiling water to the cup until the cup is 95% full, stir the mixture for 10 more seconds, and finally your hot chocolate is ready to drink. These are This is the algorithm or plan to make hot chocolate. Now we're going to look at algorithms more of a mathematical nature. So example one, it says a program is required to prompt the user for the minimum and maximum temperature readings for a day, and then calculate and display the average temperature. So we need a program to, to input the minimum and maximum temperature readings and to calculate the average temperature. So when you're reading and understanding the problem, it's good to underline the keywords so you can identify in this case your IPO, your input, your processing, and your output. So it's required to prompt the user. Prompt is, means requesting an input. Two things to be input, the minimum and maximum temperature readings. The process is to calculate and the output is to display the average. So we have a display of the average, you have a calculation of the average. So to identify in your IPO diagram, your input is your min and max temp. You can use the full word minimum, maximum, okay? This is your plan to solve 
the problem, the temperature readings, your answers can differ. It depends on what you need to call your minimum and maximum temperature. But I've just used the word minimum, maximum. Your processing, we need to calculate the average. That, that's the processing to be done. And your output is the average. And a specific example to see how it works or how it should work. We can let your minimum temperature be 20, your maximum be 26. Your average is when we add both the temperatures and divide by two. That's how you find the average between two numbers. And that's your answer here of 23. Now using the specific example, we can design a pseudocode. So step one, input min comma max. Now the variables you use here, we call this variables. This is actually, if you look at RAM, this is actually spaces in RAM that's allocated for the values you input and you do your calculations. You need to know what happens in RAM. So when you say input min and max, it means there's two placeholders here, one for minimum, one for maximum. The values that I'm using here will be from the specific example for you to understand how memory works. So to work out the average, we need to add what's in the minimum bo uh, box or memory location and the maximum memory location, add them and divide by two. So the instruction here is to go to min after you input the value, which is 20, go to max 26, you add the numbers, you divide by two and you store it in another memory location called average. And then when you output, you output what's in the memory location, the value that's there. So whenever you have these, these are called variables, but they refer to memory location where the values will be stored. This is a pseudocode, so it can work for any set of values. So if you input for your minimum and maximum are two different values, like for example, 19 degrees and 25 degrees, and you'll have 19 and you'll have 25, and you'll have a different answer for average. If, you, if the minimum temperature was 21 and 30, maximum is 30, then you'll have 21, and 30, then you work out the average. Now a trace table can be used to trace your pseudocode. And we can use these values here because we have worked at a specific example. We can use this, or we can use a different set of values. And your trace table, the lines represent the line numbers here or the numbered list. So line one says input min and max. So when we're tracing line one, we say that min, what value will it have? So let it be 20. We can use any value here, but we're going to trace using the specific example. So we let that be 20 in the same line. We input your max, we let it be 26. Line two means work at the average. Line two, the average is 23, because you take the min plus max divided by two. So we go back here, we take your min, we take your max, we add and we divide by two. And the last one, line three, your output is 23. Now your trace table is a way of showing what happens in, in memory. I've drawn this diagram for you to see, but this is actually what happens in memory. So we take your memory locations that we, that we drew here and you're writing it as a trace table. So whatever variables, as again I say, this is called variables. Whatever variables you are using, these variables here can be written on as a table form. So your trace table is representing what happens in RAM. Now let's look at the second example. A program is required to calculate the tax to be added on two items to be sold. Input the price of each of the items Calculate a 15% tax on the combined price of the items. Display the total price of both items before and after tax. Now breaking down the problem to read and understand, a program is required to calculate the tax. So we're calculating tax to be added on two items. There are two items. And we need to input the price of each of the items. So we are going to input two prices because there are two items and we need to input the price. We're going to calculate a 15% tax. So we're calculating 15% tax. This value has been given. It's not input. 
So we're going to calculate a 15% tax on the combined price of the items. Combined means you're going to add the price, add the item prices. And you're going to display the total of both items before and after tax. So we're on two outputs. One is the total price before tax, and the other one is after tax. So breaking this down into your IPO table, the input is your price one and price two. You could call it item one, item two. Right, so your variables can be your own. So I use price one, price two. Your processing. If we look at read and understand, we need to calculate the total price because we want to add the two items. We need the combined price, so that's total price. We also need to work out a 15% tax. So we calculate 15% tax on total price. Then we also need to calculate the total price after tax. There's the chair, after tax. So all this processing needs to be done. And the only two outputs are required, the total price before tax and the total price after tax. Looking at my specific example, we you chose these two values here. Price one is 100, price two is 260. So a total price means I need to add. Now this helps you designing your pseudocode because you need to know the operation to use and that is add. So we're adding the two values. Your tax amount is 15%. 15% is 15 divided by 100 or you can type in 0 0.15. So it's 15% times your total price. So what's your total price? 360, it's 15% of 360, that's 39. And your total price after tax means you take your, your total price 360 and we add our tax, which is 39. That is your total price after tax. Now we need to convert this to a pseudocode. Your pseudocode step one means I need to input two prices. You remember your IPO diagram? It says input two prices. So input price one, price two. Your next step in your IPO diagram was, means you're gonna total. So your pro, one of your process is totaling. There's your totaling and your add. So we, can, we, we add price one plus price two. We do not put in 100 and 260. We're gonna add the memory boxes or memory locations because the values are stored in the memory locations. And this is here to help you with regards to what's happening in RAM. So when you input price one and price two, the values are stored in these memory locations. So the variables price one and price two will have these values. Now your total price means I need to add what's in price one and add what's in price two to get my total price. So there's a plus sign, we're adding, we store, this arrow means you assign it, you store it back, you store it into a memory location called total, total price. There's it here, you're storing it in total price. Now to work out your tax amount, remember it's 15% times your total price, which is 360. So it's 15% times your total price. So it's 15% of what's stored in this memory location. Your total price after tax means you've got to add your total price amount and your tax amount. This is what we did here. So we add the total price plus tax amount. Note, we're not, we are not using any of these values. We are using the memory locations here. So to get your total price after tax, it's your to what's stored in this memory location because what's stored here, the computer needs to add both this and gives you the total price after tax. Remember this program has to work for any prices you enter. For example, if you input the price, uh, something costs 500 rand, and something costs 370 rand, then those values go here, like 500 and 370. So when you're working at total price, it will go to these memory locations and pull out the values you entered. In, that, in this case, we said you can have like 500 and 370. It will take the 500, take the 370, work out the answer and store it in here. Because your inputs can change, we need to have memory locations that we can add to get the next answer. Memory location that we can get the value from to work out the next answer. So you will not have your actual input values anyway in your uh, pseudocode. 
you will only have or make reference to your memory locations. Now in your output, there's two things that are required to output, the total price before tax and after tax. In the last example, we simply just output average. We did not leave a message, but now we, output, we are going to output two values or two price amounts. So if there's no message, then there is a confusion as to which output. If you think of your computer screen, if you just have two values placed there, in, in this example, if you have 360 and 399, without a statement, it is not meaningful. So we put a message in quotes. We say the total price before tax, that's total price, that's before tax. And the total price after tax, we will retrieve the value from the memory location. All your outputs, the values must be retrieved from your memory locations. Now you do not have to always draw this, uh, what's happening in RAM. After we have completed some pseudocodes, you have an idea that these are all memory locations. When you need to display something, you go back to the memory location that has the value to display. When you're doing a calculation, for example, tax amount is 15% of total price and you go back to see where you have total price, that's the memory location you're using. If you know total after tax, I need to add the tax amount and I need to add the total price, you go back to the names that you use from your memory location. So these names must be consistent. You have total price here. Whenever you're referring to total price, it's the same name. Your tax amount is used, it's the same name. So your names must be consistent. If you input price one and price two, then you add price one and price two. You cannot use other names. It is where the data is stored. Look at RAM. It's where the data is stored. It will be looking for the same names throughout. Now to check if your answer is correct, we trace. So line one says input price one comma price two. So line one, price one is 100, price two is 260. Using our specific example. Line two, your total price. Your total price instruction is add price one and price two. So you add 100 and 260, I've got 360. Line three, I need to work out my tax amount. So the tax amount is 15% times total price. So you do the calculation and you put the answer. Line four, your total after tax. It, you go to total price, you get 360, you get the tax amount, you add it and then you write it in here. And line three, you got two outputs, the total price before tax and the total price after tax. There's your messages with your outputs. And your application is to write pseudocodes for the following. Number one, prompt the user to enter three numbers, determine and display the sum and average of the three numbers. Second one, you need to input the price of a slice of pizza and the number of slices purchased, calculate and output the total cost. Now you will try two examples and you will send me a picture of this example so I can mark it. I will present you one more video where I complete one with you so you can see how it works. <laughs>